Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. Today we're going to be starting a new project, um, and we're going to do it a little differently this time. Instead of using our tried and true ampersand gesso board, we are going to be going to straight scrap plywood and creating a good base for encaustics with that. So, with that in mind, let's get started. So we are going to start today with this piece of raw plywood. Um, and we're going to be doing some things that are a little outside the norm. Um, first and foremost, we're going to be uh, drilling some holes into this. The uh, overall idea of what I'm trying to do here is um, I do have just a kind of a, a good supply of, of scrap plywood. And so we're kind of playing off of the kind of uh, found object art trope. Uh, just a little bit um, with uh, this piece and the next piece after it. Um, just kind of playing with the idea of kind of like a found artifact um, sort of scenario. Something that's got a little bit of wear and tear, kind of a map to, 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 to sort of a, a artifice of sorts. So what we're doing here is I've drilled a few holes just to give some interesting dimension and shape going on, just to try something a little bit different than the than what we've done in the past. Sanded it down just a little bit, um, just to get rid of any sort of odd tooth or interesting or anything that might uh, cause issue for our gesso layers. So first and foremost, first thing uh, I do is add a layer of gesso. Um, always gonna mix up your gesso quite well before applying it. It can separate over time, um, especially if, a, if you have a big old jug like I do. Um, so always give it a really good shake um, before you start with using your tub of gesso, um, just in case it does tend to separate. So um, at this point, we're just gonna do one layer for now and uh, then build off of that um, after this one dries a little bit. How many layers of gesso you use on a piece depends one on the substrate, uh, two on how smooth what you're looking to actually get um, from applying your gesso layer. Technically, we wouldn't have to put a gesso layer down here at all if I didn't want to. I could easily go with raw wood. Uh, the thing about using the gesso layer is it does create a nice layer um, so that the encaustic doesn't just seep directly into the wood, causing me to put a lot more encaustic medium down um, than it would be with having this nice base layer down beforehand. This causes it to not just straight absorb into the wood first. So um, I let that first layer of gesso dry for about an hour or so. You'll tell when it's dry. It, will, it won't have a sheen to it. It'll look matte finished. And then I'm going to apply the second coat to it. You see I put some little uh, little hooks into those holes there to prevent them from filling with the gesso. Those will not be there when we uh, actually start this project. They are just there uh, to keep those holes gesso free. Looks a little odd. <laughs> Could possibly look like a little bit like a modern art project. Um, but those are just there for uh, utilitarian reasons for now. So we're going to put down this second layer of gesso. I'm not being as careful to put um, a even coat down on here because I do want a bit of texture um, to be um, current throughout this entire piece. So um, I'm, I'm being very careful in making my brush strokes of this last layer of gesso look kind of how I want them to. Um, so that's why I'm, when I'm all said and done, I'm making sure they're on kind of a horizontal sort of motion rather than a vertical one, um, simply to to uh, to enforce um, the motion that I want. Um, because even after I finish this up, it'll still have a little bit of uh, just draw marks. Now, I cannot stress this enough. After you put down your layers of gesso, you do need to sand them um, just to smooth it out just a little bit. But when doing this, please, 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 always wear a mask. Um, I cannot stress that enough. When sanding gesso, you need to be wearing a mask. Um, sanding gesso does create particles of dust um, to be put in the air, and inhaling um, gesso is not healthy. So whenever you are gessoing your own substrate, be it canvas, wood, panel, whatever it is, always wear a mask when sanding it. In this day and age, 
we probably all have a mask sitting around somewhere. So put it on, even if you don't, handkerchief around the face, anything to prevent any of those particles from being uh, breathed in um, is key because a lot of damage can happen from breathing in gesso particles. So wear a mask whenever sanding your gesso layers. That being said, it took about two hours or so for that final layer to dry. Um, you want it to be completely dry and completely cured before sanding it. Uh, otherwise, you can get some odd, odd sort of texture elements going on. So at this point, we have our two gesso layered sanded board with a few holes drilled into it. And so now we are going to start with our base layers. And I'm going to start out with the Neo Color uh, pastels and just doing a a color layer uh, more than anything else to kind of our general sort of color composition uh, situated before we start adding in cost to this piece. Overall this piece is actually going to be a lot more neo color pastels than encaustic. The encaustic is, is mostly going to be used as sort of a layering and binding sort of elements um, with the neo colors. So this kind of gives you a much different approach to using encaustic without using too much um, coloration and actually pigmented encaustic, but using it as really a way to uh, build and create transparent layers um, and add a lot of texture in interesting ways. So, um, as we know, the Neo Color is indeed water soluble. So I am just adding a little bit of water right here to thin it out, create much more of a uh, of a wet layer rather than a uh, gesture marked crayon layer. And now I'm going to be using paper towels and many other things to pull it back up because we want something that is very textured, very worn. Again, we want this to be just to kind of feel like it's a found ancient artifact when we're all said and done, um, uh, equating it almost like a, a, a map, a tablet um, of sorts is kind of the idea and theme that I am going for with this piece. So um, again, just putting in a little color, a little tonation right here, um, adding just a few darker scenarios just to add um, a little bit of texture on this base layer here, add a little bit of dimension going on um, to it as we as we begin this piece. Um, so we're going to be seeing a lot of neocolor play going on with this piece overall, um, and a lot of trying to push a lot of that pigmentation into um, kind of uh, cracks and crevices and spots, um, so it really reads as as sort of uh, texture and and worn out um, features. So just taking a couple of elements, most of these again get washed out pretty much to the point where you don't even really notice them that much, um, but there is just um, a little overall indication when we're all said and done um, of what these uh, kind of color tones are doing here. Um, just adding just that little bit of dimension so that this yellow, this orange doesn't just seem like a flat tonal shade adding a little bit of these extra extra bits in here just adds just a little bit more dimension um, to a very base layer when we have just color against white. Um, really helps differentiate just a little bit more roundedness in what we have going on here. Um, so just a lot of play, a lot of the stuff will easily get covered up as we start putting layers down, but we want to have a good thorough um, textured backdrop to start with. Um, so any of this little play is definitely uh, needed in order to to really sell the point that this is something that's been around for quite some time and not something that I have manufactured in a couple hours. So a lot of a lot of brush and then pull, brush and then pull back. Um, it, it almost seems like I'm not getting anywhere um, as I'm working on it but actually these just little, little details are starting to build as I'm doing this, putting down a mark and picking it back up. So as you can see now, a lot with that, there is now a lot of tonal range now in this orange as it was before and put it down just a straight orange. 
Now we have some different elements going on. Some look a bit more worn down, some look more foreground, some look more background. We have a lot more going on here. Now I'm sanding it down a little bit in spots um, just to get a little bit more sort of texture and wear, um, soften just a couple edges here and there. Again, anything I can do to just start that wear process immediately is what we want to do with this piece. So sand, 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 sand. And again, even now I am wearing a mask while I am sanding this because um, we're still working on that gesso layer even though there's something on top of it. So wear that mask when sanding. Gesso or anything really. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put down our base layer of encaustic medium. Um, and in doing so with this piece, um, as you can see, I'm not putting it down terribly even. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of moving around where I'm actually starting my brush stroke, um, leaving spots a little bit more uh, empty of this encaustic, going back over a little bit to just put in just a touch here and there. Uh, but overall, I do want kind of an uneven approach Again, so that when I start putting down other colors and tones, um, it's not going to read always on the same level. We're going to give this a fuse, um, but as I'm doing so, you, you notice that instead of doing just the normal back and forth layer, all at the same tempo and speed, um, I actually speed up and slow down and I almost miss a couple areas here and there as I'm doing it this time around. And that's because I want a lot of texture very early on, um, a lot of dimpling and such to happen, especially in sort of the edges of this piece. Um, so I'm taking care to leave a lot of texture in this layer of um, encaustic medium. So I do want it to even out a little bit so that I have a good base to work from, but I also want a lot of little spots where I can start to feed in pigmentation and other bits like that. So as you can see now, it is very smooth in a lot of it, but we do have some areas that still have a bit of textural elements in that encaustic medium. It's looking nice. And now, like it's any time when you're working with the first layer of encaustic medium, every now and then you will get a hair, eyelash, uh, brush fibers get embedded in there. So I'm just taking the exacto knife here to get rid of a couple of those small little elements. Because as much as I want texture, I do not want my eyelashes in this piece. That will be a bit of a distraction. And that is going to be all for us today. As you can see, we have a good base layer down for this new piece. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the new direction of this piece that we're doing. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and as always, subscribe to Nameless Studio for more videos like this. And until next time, I've been Tyler. Be seeing you.